Batman is a television program that ran on the ABC network for three seasons from 1966 to 1968. Adam West would star as Batman along with Burt Ward as Robin. Instead of being produced simply as a one-hour show, the decision was made to have the show air twice a week in half-hour installments with a cliffhanger ending that would connect the two episodes. Now I realize there are different schools of thought on this interpretation of Batman. Some people love it and can enjoy the camp for what it's worth, but it also has its fair share of detractors as well that think somehow it diminishes the darker versions of the character. While I love me some grim and gritty Dark Knight, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses on, would you? Huh? I'm definitely not part of those that dislike this television series either. Your glasses. Remember, never hit a man with glasses. I grew up watching this series in syndication on stations like Coffee TV 20, and I loved every minute of it. We've got what you're looking for, TV 20. To me, Adam West's Batman was the same guy I would see in the Filmation cartoons, Super Friends episodes, and I would frequently have my superpowers action figure pow, zap, and socking bad guys like the Joker and the Penguin. I mean, I even thought when first reading Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns that Merkel and Chief O'Hara might have been the same guy. And for those that think this show doesn't have anything to do with the so-called true Batman, well, they should know that the first dozen episodes or so, along with about six others, would all be based on actual stories straight out of Batman or Detective Comics. Sure, and that's the truth. The first two episodes, High Diddle Riddle and Smack in the Middle, would be based on the story Remarkable Ruse of the Riddler from Batman 171, published in May 1965. The Riddler was portrayed by Frank Gorshin and would first appear in Detective Comics 140 in 1948, which was also the basis for the second season episodes, Batman's Anniversary and A Riddling Controversy, although in these episodes the Riddler would be portrayed by John Astin instead, who was better known as the Addams Family's Gomez. The next two episodes, Fine Feathered Finks and The Penguins of Jinx, would be based on the story Partners in Plunder from Batman 169, published in April 1965. The Penguin was portrayed by Burgess Meredith and would first appear in Detective Comics 58 in December 1941. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, brace yourself for a shock. The, the episodes Joker's Wild and Batman is Riled find their basis in the story The Joker's Utility Belt from Batman 73, published in October 1952. Cesar Romero would play the Joker, who would make his first appearance in Batman No. 1 in 1940. The character of Mr. Zero, first introduced in the Ice Crimes of Mr. Zero from Batman 121 in February 1959, would have his name altered to Mr. Freeze for the television series episodes Instant Freeze and Rats Like Cheese. In these episodes, Mr. Freeze was played by George Sanders. Later, Mr. Freeze would go on to be played by actors Otto Preminger and Eli Wallach. Soon I'll be able to cover the entire world with an instant ice cap. In Detective Comics 346, titled The Inescapable Doom Trap from December 1965, the villainous magician named Carnado was altered and changed to Zelda the Great for these episodes Zelda the Great and A Death Worse Than Fate. The two episodes The Thirteenth Hat and Batman Stands Pat are based on the story The Mad Hatter of Gotham City from Detective Comics 230 and featured villain The Mad Hatter who was portrayed by David Wayne and would first appear in Batman 49 in October 1948. Precisely. Jervis, that's positively waggish. There are other villains who would appear on the show from the comics which include False Face who would be featured in Batman 113 in February 1958 and would later have a female version of the character in Birds of Prey 112. The Clock King, who was originally a Green Arrow villain, first appeared in World's Finest Comics 111. The Puzzler, a Superman villain, who first appeared in Action Comics 49, would fill in for an absentee Riddler, and of course Catwoman, first played by Julie Newmar, and eventually Eartha Kitt, who first appears as the Cat in Batman No. 1 in 1940, and later goes through a variety of cat masks and costumes, until reflecting a more TV series-inspired costume by Batman 197 in 1967. 
What about Robin? Robin? Oh, I've got it. We'll kill him. There is a school of thought that the character of Egghead, played by Vincent Price, was based on Barney Barrows, the mental giant of Gotham City, who first appeared in Detective Comics 217 in March 1955. Also, the character of King Tut, created for the television series, eventually had his comic debut in Batman Confidential 26 in April of 2009. Many of the original villains created for the series would later get a cameo in the Brave and the Bold episode, Day of the Dark Knight. And also Clock King, which is awesome because he has the comic book face mask of the clock, but when it opens up, he resembles Walter Slezak from the Adam West TV show. I would feel remiss not to mention that Shame, Batman's cowboy nemesis, was played by Cliff Robertson, who would also go on to play Uncle Ben in the Spider-Man film series. With great power comes great responsibility. Let's go. The late Roddy McDowell would appear as the bookworm and would become best known in his role as the character of Cornelius in Planet of the Apes. He later provided the voice of Jervis Tetch, the Mad Hatter, in several episodes of Batman the Animated Series. You ruined my life! I was willing to give you whatever life you wanted! By the third season, Batgirl, played by Yvonne Craig, would be introduced to the series. I had the pleasure of meeting Miss Craig at the comic book and sci-fi convention held at the Shrine Auditorium Expo Center. The Barbara Gordon Batgirl would first be introduced in Detective Comics 359 in 1967. This comic would be the basis for a short Batgirl pilot featuring her encounter with Killer Moth from the comics, which was never aired but helped to make Batgirl a season regular in season 3. Also, Joan Collins was pretty hot as the femme fatale, the siren, but I'll be damned if her siren song wasn't the most annoying pitch to have to listen to. The very first superhero team-up on television occurs on this series with Batman and Robin and the Green Hornet and Kato in A Piece of the Action and Batman's Satisfaction. Little known fact is that the Lone Ranger is actually the ancestor of Brett Reed, who is the crime fighter, the Green Hornet. Guess you can't win them all, Mr. Reed. Ever since Bruce Wayne and I were kids, we've been rivals in one way or another. While the pilot episode of Batman mentions the death of Bruce Perhaps Wayne's parents... Perhaps anti-crime centers of the type you now propose when my own parents were murdered by dastardly criminals. And Commissioner Gordon describes the origin of the bat suit in a subsequent episode... As Batman realized when he set out in this crusade, nothing so strikes terror into the criminal mind as the shape and shadow of a huge bat. We wouldn't actually see Batman's origin televised until Superpowers Galactic Guardians episode, The Fear. Mommy! Daddy! No! And then the answer came to me, like an omen. And so I became Batman. The show is pretty awesome. I grew up watching it, and I loved every minute of it. It was great. Cowabunga, Bigora! Cowabunga? Bigora. 